Hello and welcome to the Sunbird Crochet Podcast. My name is Claudia and I'm coming to you from Germany. the 2nd of March 2023 and like last time I'm going to take you first for a trip around the botanical gardens. If you would like to skip to the good parts <laughs> then I will put for you down below a timestamp. Otherwise let's go into the botanical gardens for a while and I'll see you in a bit. Here we are springtime the snowdrops are out and I thought I would go for another walk around and show you what has changed since last time because nature is getting ready for warmer temperatures another life from botanical gardens look there we've got lovely blue sky and my next episode is overdue I haven't been very busy with crochet I must say I mean I have and I have not I've done crochet progress but I haven't haven't started a new crochet project except the one which I am going to give to Marta. <laughs> That's started, done and finished. And it's already packed into her parcel, but I thought maybe I should take it out and show it to you before sending it off. So yes, that's my exciting news and more about all the crochet and news later. But let me just go for a little more around the gardens here in my lunch break and I will talk to you in a bit. At the moment they are preparing the flower beds and plant beds for the new garden season and since this is a very big garden we're actually using trucks and all kind of machinery and equipment so that's what you see there in the background they were opening up the ground putting in some drainage system or maybe even watering system I, I'm not an expert in that and then there were poles for a wooden fence like an old farmer's fence style and then if we turn over to the left you see that big tree there with the mistletoe like covered in mistletoe that's where in summer we will have uh, parrots nesting um, parrots are not 
like uh, they don't really belong in the wild here in Germany but some of them escaped the zoo in Cologne and they are spreading all around Germany not just the zoo in Cologne but several zoos they are quite intelligent and escape artists so for decades they are now taking over <laughs> the gardens and not just the botanical gardens but also the private gardens and they are breeding and feeling quite happy here yeah so in summer when you are standing under this tree you can hear them talking to themselves or amongst themselves very loudly and they are green if I can find a photo I will put it up here a close-up photo and um, yes they are quite quite nice to watch very quick to disappear again very cautious at the moment let me zoom in I don't know if you can see them there but under the big tree oh that's a pigeon but under the big tree there are a couple of magpies and I always have to think of Ali from Little Drops of Wonderful podcast because if you see one magpie that's bad luck but if you see a couple then that's good luck so there are at least four so two couples can you hear that there are some more geese somewhere oh there's another magpie couple so lots of birds here because there's also some lakes nearby and and if we are turning to the left you see some palm trees and there is a bit of a warmer climate produced by this building and inside are lots of plants native to the Mediterranean but also to Australia and New Zealand and I've been there last time with you I don't think that much has changed since then but I will have a quick look around there and if there's something new I will show you Here we are Isn't that pretty? This there is a lovely bench to have your lunch This was much bigger last time. I hear a little echo of my own steps. This is so peaceful here. You can actually listen to the words which are said on the other side. So I'm whispering. <laughs> Typically German, please stay on the path. Look, that has grown a little bit, at least five centimeters since last time. to be released <laughs> and then more fern trees I didn't 
tell you last time that this is a camellia flower or bush or tree, whatever you call it. It's a camellia. So we've been in there and we've started here and now I'm going to Orangerie and South Africa because that's my favorite place. What is totally normal for you South Africans over there, these are pots with agapanthus. Obviously not in bloom. Here we've got the remnants of the protea flower. Sunbirds love these flowers. They're hanging head downwards to get their little beaks and tongue into these flowers and to drink the nectar. Look at this beauty. Isn't that pretty? Now, this is a very special plant. This plant already existed 300 to 250 million years ago. Zucadene type of plant. Looks like a palm or a fern, but it's neither. This was the South Africa themed greenhouse. So let's head over to the crochet and knitting. So here we are back from the botanical gardens. Today I'm wearing my simple granny shawl. Let me just show it to you. It's my happy shawl. So that's why I'm wearing it today. These are all Advent Minis and bits of leftover yarn from other projects, which I put together just a simple granny stitch. And I think I used a free three millimeter hook like years ago. It's my favorite, one of my favorites. For those who are new here, and there are quite a lot, I might have to introduce myself properly this time. So I'm Claudia. I'm living near Cologne, which is in the west of Germany, like a one hour drive from the Dutch border, about that. And I'm living not in the city of Cologne, but outside, quite a rural place in a small village which i really appreciate i appreciate the fresh air i appreciate that i actually know the locals or at least those in my street <laughs> and i've started crocheting about christmas you know 2015 or it might be 2014 but i think it was christmas 2015 maybe 
I don't remember. Sometimes, one of these years. And I started knitting way later. Like I dabbled in knitting like in 2018 maybe. And then I put it down again and now I picked it up again. And uh, so this is a crochet podcast mainly with little bits and bobs of knitting and other crafts. I, I mean, we did, what have I done? Um, stamping. I did some paper crafting, paper cutting. We've done lots of painting and drawing and sketching and then tangles. That's the art bit is my other passion. And uh, what else? We've been outside going for walks around the forest. And now and then, especially during Vlogmas, I'm also cooking and baking. <laughs> Not always successfully, but I'm aiming to do my best. <laughs> So this is me. You're all welcome to watch me talking about my projects and about everything which comes to my mind, which is really like, it's a mess. It's a lot of crafty mess. <laughs> so now, enough of a talking. Let's go and do some business. Today I have for you one finished object, free whips then i'd like to talk to you about some easy crochet projects for easter which is just a month away well a little bit more but a month and a half and i would like to talk about some swaps with caroline and carol and marta and then incoming i have a couple of incoming things which are yarn related and also one not yarn related more about historical fashion related and sewing it's not what you think i will show you and then there is a little chat i would like to talk to you about the battenberg mail make along which runs for two years and then also i like to update update you on the butt make it crochet curl in case you're wondering why I'm looking down, I've written it all down so that I don't get muddled up. And uh, then the But Make It Crochet Curl is my own crochet along. So I would also like to show you some prizes, which I've allocated by now. After my big de-stashing and stash organizing and spring cleaning of my stash last time. No, I'm still not finished, but I'm getting there. And then I would like to give you a little tiny bit of an update about the photo shoot of my Edwardian skirt and waist, waist shirt, which is another rabbit hole, which I fell in head over heels. And then a bit of uh, podcast admin right at the end. So two pages. Let's start. Let's go, let's go. First of all, finished objects. I'd like to show you my one and only finished object, which is the Squitch Shawlette, a crochet shawl, very long asymmetrical shawl, not very deep, but quite interesting. And it lies very well on the shoulders. Uh, Marta, this is yours. <laughs> Marta suggested that she or she offered that she would knit some socks for me because I'm totally untalented when it comes to knitting socks. <laughs> it frustrates me. Um, so she very generously offered me to knit me a pair of socks and in exchange i will crochet her this shawl um not that she needs me for crochet because she's she's a crochet designer she is great in everything crochet but nevertheless 
I've ordered some hand dyed yarn in, do I have a color here? Yes, I do. <laughs> in this colorway by Wollwichtel, die Wollwichtel, and it's called um, what's it called? Ah, there. Yeah. Arousia Orange. So Marta, if you don't want to get spoiled, please look away for a moment. I already had it all packed up in the parcel, in the box, but I took it out just now. I keep it in a gauze bag to protect it. And um, this is the shawl for Marta. It's a very interesting construction. You might say it's simple. It's mustache. And you start here up in the up in the tip and you work sideways, so to say. You're decreasing on this scalloped edge. Well, it's not really scallops, but um don't want to share too much. <laughs> of about the pattern even though it is a free pattern but I will tell you where to find this if you want to make yourself one it's very easy and I think this is the third or the fourth squitch which I'm making now or which I've made because this is a finished object and then you are increasing here on this side and so it grows and grows and grows and grows and grows and grows and then eventually you're just finishing this side off. This is the last row down here. And you finish it off with a bit of a, another edging. And this is not, this part here is not straight. It, it's slightly curved so that it doesn't fall off your shoulders. I hope that she will love it. Now. Let me pack this in again. I will be back in a sec. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> By the way, if you want to avoid like uh, folds or crumpling of your shawls, this is the best way to keep them because um, yeah, it keeps keeps them smooth. So I put it back here in the organza bag and I will post this as soon as possible to Marta. But at the same time, I don't want to pressure her. She's on the first sock of a pair. So no worries, no pressure, no rush. That's my finished object. So now Marta, you can watch again if you'd like to. <laughs> Now, let's move on to whips. I've got three whips currently, two crochet ones, which are blank blankets, both are blankets, and my one and only knitting project at the moment. So let's talk about that one first. It's for an uncle sweater. And I absolutely love it, but I don't have it with me here right now because you wouldn't really notice much of my progress. Um, I've added a bit to the body, but not that it's done yet. I haven't reached the ribbing part yet. So it's that progress isn't really exciting at the moment. So I will share more about my ranunculus sweater once I'm past the point of extending the body. So let's move right on to my chrysalis fro or chrysalis fro. I never know how to pronounce this. This is um, the original pattern is by the floral hook, who is Jen Tyler. I've shown it to you last time already. Um, and I think that's also why I have so many new subscribers because you've seen those 
in the video image. So here it is again. This is what I've shown you last time already. And as you can see, I've added quite a lot of border. So I've started here, I'm, I've made this square. And now I'm just, I started here with little puff stitches. And then I'm now making it the opposite way. These are double crochets, US terms, and these are puff stitches. Again, I'm turning the corners with one puff stitch, chain one to close the puff stitch, chain another two for the corner, then make the other puff stitch in the corner and chain one to close. And I'm making one chain in between each puff stitch anyway. So uh, yeah, it's growing. It's my, it's a project which I'm doing when I'm watching TV. <laughs> I've watched a lot of Fixer Upper. This is all Fixer Upper progress. <laughs> I love that show. I don't know if you are able to watch this where you are living, but uh, it's like a home improvement show. Someone is buying a house and they are paying someone else to totally renovate it and <laughs> make it their new home. Anyhow. This is Crochet pro Podcast. So I'm I'm loving this project now. And I've still got I've still got five balls of this color to go through before I can start joining the next color. And I'm wondering if I shouldn't just finish the whole blanket in this color and call it done. Because I've got plans for another blanket, which I'm going to talk to you about in a bit. So my chrysalis fro. It's getting lots of love. And I'm using a four millimeter hook size for my yarn. This is all acrylic yarn by Hobby. And some of it might still be Stylecraft, Special DK. I'm not sure, but most of it is definitely Hobby. I can show you the ball band. There it is. It's color number 46. And it's 100% acrylic yarn. I'm trying to work through my acrylic stash. Um, yeah, I've got it. I know it's not environmental friendly, but since I've already got it, I'm going to make something useful out of it so that it gets some love and maybe it's going to be an heirloom kind of thing. We will see. It is quite colorful, so it depends on your taste. So now, next. Next is my second Battenberg blanket. I've shown you last time my first one. It was in the background here over my, over the back of my seat. And I've started another one and I've started making the squares first. This is going to be a pastel-y kind of color one. This yarn is all Aran weight yarn and I'm using a five millimeter hook this time. So this for instance is Drops Alpaca. No, it's, it's Drops. It's Drops Alaska, I believe. And I'm just making squares at the moment. This is another colorway from Drops. They have gorgeous colors. So I'm just making squares. Also, this one works. This is the Julia yarn from Seemann, Dutch company. And then I have Drops Charisma with a K. And I'm holding this double which turns out to be the same size of square in the end. This one I've made as well. It's a little bit more of a chunkier weight yarn, as you can see here. It's roughly the same size, a little bit bigger, but not too much. So it will be blocked and it's going to be fine. 
So yes, at the moment I'm just making squares and originally I had decided to go for a dark green contrast color or maybe you would call it the main color, but um, it didn't, didn't work for me when I joined the squares together with it. It looked too too much contrast, not not like not something you would like to look at all the time. So the Battenberg blanket is a free pattern by Sandra Paul, who is Cherry Hearts, and the Mel, the make along, is run by Mariette and Liani, who are both South African ladies. Both have their own podcast, and I'm going to link them down below. This is a crochet along and a knit along, uh, like a make along. And it's running for two years. It started in January this year and it's going to run until the end of next year. So plenty of time to join. There is a group, a chat on Instagram. And if you would like to join as well, then just send either of the two a direct message on Instagram and they will add you to the group. And exciting, exciting is that next Sunday, so this Sunday on the, what is it? Today is the second the 5th of March, there's going to be a Zoom meeting for this group. I'm looking forward to that. Now, these were all my current works in progress. Next, I would like to talk to you about easy crochet projects for Easter. <music> Easter isn't that far away, so I don't want to suggest that you are going to do something which is really taking a long time. Instead, I would like just like to show you three little projects which are totally manageable. So let's start off with a little flower. These are daffodils. And let me just take one out here and I'll show you. I've made these quite a couple of years ago and I was using the wrong yarn since this is acrylic. You should probably use um, cotton yarn so that it keeps shape better. Like the petals here, you could block them, you could stiffen them, but right now it's not. It's a uh, free pattern on YouTube and I will link it down below. I love it. It wasn't very difficult and she's going to tell you everything you need to know. Uh, these little projects could go for like on your Easter table, make one for each of your family put it beside the table, or maybe you make a bouquet for the center of your table. You will need, apart from yarn, you will also need some wire, and then you get some green, it's not sticky tape, but it's something which florists use to um, bind the flower bouquets. But you will Get all the details and the pattern, which is by Happy Berry Crochet on YouTube. There are plenty of patterns for daffodils, but this is the one I've used. I think it's on YouTube for 11 years or something like that already. 11 or 7, many years already. So this is definitely approved and very good. So this is a little project. Back then I've made five. One I gave away already. Then always easy is to make eggs. This is this is an example. I had these very cheap like plastic eggs. You can take real ones, but uh, I've used up these plastic eggs, which I got from a cheap shop. And I've just 
crocheted around them. I started here on the, this here with a magic ring and then I've made some, how many, I don't know, probably 12, 12 double crochets into the magic ring and then I've created chain spaces and I've into these chain spaces I've worked the double crochets again, then again I've created more chain spaces and double crochets and chain spaces and double crochets and <laughs> and so on and so on and then I finish it off here and pulled it all together and uh, that's some Easter decorations easy peasy <laughs> you can be more creative than I was you can make some other lace lace um, ornaments on here it's like these stones, you know, you, you can crochet around stones, you can crochet around eggs. Very fun little project. I didn't use a pattern for that one. Just be a little creative. It's, it doesn't take much time. So that's the other one. And then if you are a quick crocheter, or if you have lots of time, then I would like to show you a crochet square, which is a big one, but uh, I've turned it into a cushion cover, which I really use a lot. So this is the King Protea Square by Dedri Ois. I probably pronounced her name incorrectly, but she has a website called look at what I made dot net and you can find this free pattern on her website. This is supposed to look like a protea flower and I think she got she did a very good job with this pattern. She's the designer who also designed Sophie's Universe Blanket. So there is lots of expertise um, she is telling you every little step and this is really fun. I've made this years ago. I've made this within the first year of me starting crocheting. So it's it's uh, for the adventurous beginner, I would say. And just uh, I've made another just simple rows of what's it? Double crochets or half double crochets. And I've added a little button and so I can even wash it when I have to. I will link this pattern down below. So these were my suggestions for easy Easter projects. If you have some like a staple pattern which you would like to recommend to the community and to everyone here amongst friends, then just post post a suggestion down below in the comments. I would appreciate that. Next, I would like to talk about the swaps which I've made with Caroline and Carol. We already talked about Marta and I'm not sure if I told you which pattern Marta is using for my socks. Let me do it just now. <laughs> she is actually cro um, not crocheting. She is knitting a pattern by West Knits, who is Stephen West. And it's a very colorful sock and full of, of texture. And I really love the look of it. I can't wait to wear them on my feet. <laughs> Or probably if they, will, if they will be too precious to wear, I will just look at them in awe and I will think of Marta and it just makes me smile already. <laughs> but back to the other swaps. I hope that neither Carol nor Caroline are minding that I'm mentioning it. You know, in, the last, in my last episode, I talked about all my makes, which I'm going to give away one way or the other and uh, Caroline and Carol contacted me because they were interested to take over some of my makes and they very generously reimbursed me for the um, 
postage costs. So they are both living in the US and I hope they don't mind that I'm talking about it here. So uh, Caroline, she was interested in the big shawl with a leaping hair on it. I will put a photo of it up here and I posted it off. Postage was, I mean, postage in general right now is horrendous. And uh, it cost me just below 20 euros to send it off to the US and that's without tracking. So fingers crossed that it will get to her safely. And uh, she gifted me a voucher on Etsy in exchange. And I haven't yet made up my mind what to buy from it, but I will share here. Although I did buy some yarn, which I will show you in a bit. So maybe this was, let's say this was my gift from Caroline. And then Carol, who is wolf crochet on Ravelry and old Rowley on Instagram. Hi, Carol. She is she is one of the lovely friends I've made here with her because of the podcast. And I very much appreciate all her input. I appreciate all your inputs and comments and, and feedbacks. And that's why I'm doing it basically here, the podcast. Um, yeah, it, I, I, you see my smile? I'm happy. Um, Carol was interested in the Briar Rose Cowl, which is my own design. And she chose the gray yellow version. I'm going to put up a photo of it here. And I'm happy to say that it arrived today. So that's, that's like six days. I've sent it off, I think last Friday. So in, within six days, it arrived and it's now with Carol and she said that she's happy and that it feels nice when she's wearing it. And uh, yeah, she was very, very generous as well. And she she uh, she gifted me free patterns for it in return, like a swap. And I've chosen two knitting patterns and one crochet pattern. So let me just tell you what I've chosen. I haven't started any of this yet, but this is definitely in my queue on Reverie. So one is the Laugh Note by Tinker Knits. And I think you all know the Laugh Note. Everyone, every podcast is talking about it. And I think now that I'm making the Ranunculus, I think I might be able to do the Laugh Note. <laughs> Confidence. Then there is the Easy Eyelid Yoke Sweater by Knit. Knit a I wrote it down. I can't write. I can't read my. Knit, <laughs> I can't read my knitting. No, I can't read my writing. Knit a tuck. Uh, I will put it a link down below. So it's the easy eyelid yoke sweater, which is also a knitting pattern, and it really looks nice and simple and so sophisticated. So uh, maybe I can fool myself and wear something sophisticated like that. <laughs> and then the third is the crochet pattern by Sweet Crochet Dreams and it's called the Take Two Shawl and this is this is a pay what you can pattern. I highly recommend this. I, I'm looking forward to making it. It gives you all different kind of textures and techniques in crochet and this looks like a really fun project to me. So these are the three patterns which Carol gifted to me. So thank you Carol. Thank you. Thank you. You've truly made me happy. And not only by gifting me these patterns, but also by knowing, I know that you are enjoying your gift. So that's, that's what makes me very happy as well. So, so much about the swaps. Let's talk about incoming. Light is fading. I might actually, I'm just putting up the, the uh, I'm putting up the blinds a little bit so that we still have some light. Let's get cracking. Incoming. You know the trend of this animated knitted frog? I can't knit a frog. I can't knit a frog, but I can support a knitter who can knit a frog. <laughs> and I'm a child. I'm turning 50 this year, but I'm still a child. So 
This is the little frog princess. Isn't she cute? She has wire in her legs so she can actually stand up on her own. Ooh, let's do the indecent thing and show her what's underneath her little <laughs> dress. Do -do. <laughs> She's holding a little heart and she has like nice eyes and a little golden crown. I couldn't resist. So I've got my little happy frog and the maker, the knitter here, the person who made this. <laughs> She's called, now oh, let me get this right. Yes, she has a shop on Etsy and it's called Bastelherzchen, which means craft, little crafting heart. So yes, little, little froggy, <laughs> little froggy girl, ballet girl. <laughs> How cute is this? So this is incoming number one. And uh, she sent me a really nice little <laughs> card to go with it here with with something which I would like to share. In German it's Man darf das Schiff nicht an einen einzigen Anker und das Leben nicht an eine einzige Hoffnung binden. Which is a quote from Epictet. And it means, roughly translated in English, you shouldn't tie your ship onto only one anchor and your life not only on one hope. Uh, does it make sense? Don't rely on only one hope in life. Yes. Which is very fitting to my current life situation. So, yes, thank you, Ingrid. Very much appreciated. She calls her Die kleine Froschprinzessin. <laughs> very nice letter. So, yes, this is incoming number one. Then we've got effectively Caroline's gift. I've bought this yarn on Etsy. And yes, Yes, I don't need more yarn, but I've bought it anyway, because I am me. <laughs> this is beautiful, beautiful yarn by Eifelwolle. Eifelwolle, you can find her here. And this is 100 gram, 420 meters. It's 75% wool and 25% polyamide. And it's called Heidelbeer auf Vanille, the colorway, which means like um, blueberry on vanilla. And Eifelwolle is really casting. So thank you, casting, for dyeing up this beautiful, beautiful yarn. I really love it. I'm not sure what I will make with it. Maybe a squitch for myself, like a spring squitch. I see like crocus colors with this yarn. So this is incoming from Eiffelwolle. Now then the next incoming is vintage crochet. It's a finished object. I don't know who did it. I've also got it from Etsy. By now I should get some Etsy. Etsy should pay me. <laughs> and uh, just look at what it came with. This was the wrapping. Okay, she put she put it in in music notes. So I'm going definitely going to keep this for scrapbooking. I actually don't know what song this is. 
but it's called Doppelter Sechsten Triller. <laughs> Quadruple Trill in Six. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think maybe this is just exercises. But what's what's that's that's just the packaging. So what I've actually ordered are some vintage lace gloves in crochet. So let me put on one of them because like these they don't look like much but if you if i put them on they are so beautiful i think they were made for children but since i my hands are quite small there you can see aren't they beautiful like lace the lace work is really stunning and i will be able to use these for my photo shoot of my historical clothing Edwardian times photo shoot. So this is my incoming number three. And I tell you something, just before I started this recording this podcast, the doorbell rang and there came another parcel, not with yarn, but with an antique book from 1908 and I haven't even unwrapped it yet. Night is really getting away so I don't know if I can if I can show it to you now it's right here but I tell you this I will go through all the other stuff and at the end I will show you this book. It will be of interest for you, Tiffany. Just saying. So now, let's move on to... No, no, wait. There's another incoming. I've bought a crochet pattern. And this is the Marigold Desert pattern. It's a new pattern by the Floral Hook. I've mentioned her before. She's the designer of the Chrysalis chrysalis blanket which i'm working on you have a colorful one and uh, the marigold desert is also a crochet along so um, jen who is the floral hook she is really a great designer she's living in cape town in south africa which is close to my heart anyway so she has a bonus right away and i love her designs go and have a look please if you are into crochet longs and blankets and mandala type of blankets it's really beautiful yes so now chat the first what i first wrote down here is the update on the battenberg mail and uh, I basically have done this already, haven't I? I've shown you my squares and I've mentioned that there is going to be a Zoom meeting on Sunday at 11 a.m. South Africa time, which is 10 a.m. time for me and 9 a.m. in the UK and whatever it is, is anywhere else in the world, uh, you will have to do the maths yourself and contact Ivar Liani or Mariette for the joining details. Then there is my own crochet cal, the butt make crochet cal. And I would like to share two things. First of all, there is a finished object. Last time I showed you mine. And this time I would like to talk about just mentioning that Caroline, Caroline Rodriguez, who is the Mind and Muse Crafts podcast. Um, she has created a freeform portrait in crochet and it's absolutely stunning. She sewed it onto one of her garments and she has her own podcast. So I'm just going to link down below her latest episode and please go and watch it. It's a stunning crochet work and she's really a master of this style, of a free freeform crochet style. So well done, Caroline. 
I, I'm in awe and she already makes plans for the next portrait. Let me show you some of the prizes I have prepared for the Butt Naked Crochet Cal. You know, I've went through my stash and I've allocated some project bags and some yarn to become prizes for this crochet long. I don't know if I will keep them all for the end of the year or if I will make like draw amongst the participants uh, like every quarter of the year. I'm not sure. I just thought I might show you some of the prizes. Also, there are so many, <laughs> I can't send them all off, so I still have to put them together so that they make sense. Just something like uh, possible prizes. First of all, the bags. This is a project bag, which I made on my, well, you know, my mother makes the bags. So this is, this is an old tra pair of trousers for me, obviously all all cleaned and it has a uh, rose Mexican kind of Frida Kahlo fabric accents and it has comes with a wristband here and it's fully lined in white so this is a very big project bag which you might get I'm not going to show you all because this would just like be too much. There's another really big project bag. I still have to actually iron it. So excuse the crinkling. <laughs> um, this is also handmade by my mother. And it has little accents like down here, love, also flower, fabric. And it's fully lined in white. It has lots of space for your sweater project. A little drawstring bag with mermaids. Lined with a flowery fabric. Just some more project bags. There is a little drawstring bag made for Halloween. Maybe this will be a special prize around Halloween time. I might actually do some giveaways, not just for this make along but or crochet along, but maybe I will keep keep these for prizes in general sometime. This is another handmade bag with some fabric which has forest animals on it. Again, I have to iron it. Um, it is fully lined with green fabric. And yeah, just another bag. This one, has no interfacing, but it still is fully lined. Just little fishes. A front bag. Again, I have to still iron this. I came unprepared, so to say. And also there is this flamingo bag with a flamingo keyring attachment and faux leather, shiny leather bottom. And it's fully lined with some light blue fabric. These are just some of the bags. There is more. I will show you more. Um, as I said, I have to iron these and I have to decide which are suiting the theme best.
because the butt naked crochet curl is all about turning art, your favorite art, into crochet. There's also yarn, yarn prizes, but I'm afraid I will have to show them to you next time because light is fading. Now, yes, last but not least, I would like to talk about my historical clothing photo shoot. <laughs> this is a collaboration with Tiffany, who is stitching addiction. And I've talked about it before. The skirt has arrived, the shirt waist has arrived, and I've donned myself up with it all and did a little, did a little, little. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I did a little home video <laughs> of me wearing the historical clothing. It's historical clothing from the Edwardian time period, which is between roughly 1900 to 1910. And it's inspired by Anne of Green Gables. I am wearing a straw boater hat to go with it. And I've also got a nice um, belt. It's a little bit too tight. So uh, I might ask a certain someone to sew me another one. <laughs> we will see. Anyhow, so uh, just a little, I posted an what's it called? An unlisted video of me, but I will also put some photos of it up here in no particular order. Just some impressions from this gorgeous outfit and I'm still thankful and will forever be thankful for this collaboration, Tiffany. And yes, I'm going to go for the photo shoot soon. I planned to do this last Sunday, but then, first of all, I was ill. Then my mother had to go to hospital for an operation. But all went well. I'm better now. My mother is out of hospital again. So um, I will do my best to do this photo shoot very soon. You can rely on that. <laughs> so now... Um, I already said last but not least, but there's just one thing which I would like to mention. I don't know how it happened, but I am... I've reached 1000 subscribers here on YouTube. And I don't know why you're all here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's... It's very flattering. I'm very thankful. And it's also quite unbelievable. I've started, I've started, is it now two or three years ago? I think it's two, two and a half years ago I've started. And now I have over 1000 subscribers, actually currently 1030. And it all happened like the last 60 or so just came within a day or two. I don't know what happened. I don't know. It must have been my last video where I showed you my wonderful chrysalis blank, chrysalis blanket. <laughs> and probably the, t the numbers are going down. And I'm not here for the numbers anyway. Um, in some ways, it's also scary. But uh, yeah, thank you for coming back and for joining my little world here and watching me sharing my projects and babbling along and uh, yeah thank you for making this crafty world a better place <laughs> yeah and with that I'm going to finish off my episode and yes don't be disappointed that there isn't a giveaway today I'm sure I will give out another prize to celebrate the 1000k. I'm just a little bit flabbergasted <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> You've seen that there are plenty of prizes and I just have to save a little bit of money to be able to afford for posting. <laughs> oh, wait! I wanted to show you that last book there, that antique book. 
So let's hope the light is still okay. Hmm. Let's hope for the best. Just a little sneak peek. I've bought this book, which is called Ich kann schneidern. And there you have a, is it a singer? I think it is. This is the publisher is Ulstein and Company, who was based in Berlin and Vienna. And this is a very popular, very big book about sewing and learning how to sew. Since it is very old, I actually have to be careful not to damage it. The spine has obviously aged. It says Ich kann schneidern, which means I can sew. And it's an illustrated home book for practical sewing. The author is Antoni Stein, Steinmann. And she was supported by Elsa Herzog, Käthe Krause, Erna Meyer, Marie Gerbrandt, Gertrud Schnabel. And they are obviously all already they all passed away already, but they left a legacy. This edition is from 1909, but I know that there are older editions of this book. So this was a popular book, which every household or probably every so household with a sewing person had. And just look at the, at the beginning of the book. There is, there is a little owl, which is the... Uh, company's logo, Ulstein, and then <laughs> can I sew? This is what you, what, what a lot of us are being asked. Well, every woman can sew. Every woman who owns this book, that is. <laughs> so there is a, uh, there are different chapters. The first chapter is how to, you know, how the technical things work, um, the different fabric types and what you do with, well, you know, I can't sew. So this is, this will teach me how to sew properly. So what you need to sew and um, what you buy and how you calculate how much fabric you need for a dress and all these things. This is fascinating. The second is the practical sewing. So how to take the measurements and how to use your uh, sewing patterns to um, how to adjust your run-of-the-mill sewing pattern to the actual body type so that if someone has a, <laughs> like a hunch or whatever so that you can adjust your sewing <laughs> and making your patterns or your your um, cut the cutouts bigger and smaller for different sizes and how you actually can make your own patterns, how you cut the fabric, how you do the interfacing, how you um, oh well how you how you pin it together, how you sew it, how you make then specifically how you make skirts, how you make blouses and then there is the princess dress and the empire dress and then how to garnish the stuff how to make a petticoat then there are different different con confectionen probably different styles and how to actually iron your things then the third part is how to dress properly. There is uh, <laughs> the bride, the dress for a bride, 
then the dress if you get married not in church but at the town hall then if you go to a ball if you are invited to to the uh, king's court then if you are, pr are doing sports then the young the dresses or the garments for the young women and mothers and the garments for older ladies and then garments for the sick the garments for those in mourning then garments those for those who are working in the household and stuff which you wear garments you wear in the morning in during matinees and at home and then in garments for your staff your house staff <laughs> and then in the fourth part you get the garments for children for babies for boys for girls and then there's backfish kleidung Backfish is a very old-fashioned German word for a teenager. Backfish is like a, a fish which gets which gets baked. It isn't, isn't quite done yet. And then in the fifth part, you get Reformkleidung for ladies and for children. And this is really small writing. And then the sixth part is practical advice how to oh and there is how to make your own corset and how to uh, do some upholstering of your body parts and figure correcting and how to actually preserve your clothes so this will be very interesting i'm going to share more of this but really the light is really getting low just to show you one of them this is page 63 and this is exactly the pigeon breast style of the time and this is showing you how to measure your skirt isn't that beautiful i mean the illustrations are already worthwhile for this book it didn't come cheap but i think this will be lovely and it gives you also um, patterns for your garments. So it's it's not it's really it gives you um, here. You actually get the patterns here. They're tiny. I don't know how you're supposed to actually make them bigger, but. Um, yeah, it tells you how to make these things. Like this is here, how to make blouses, waist, shirt waists, waist shirts, <laughs> waist shirts. <laughs> and uh, this is very interesting to me. Oh, this is the princess dress. Look at that. She has, she has like a, here, that's the princess dress. She's basically dragging a, <laughs> an extra length of dress behind her. And here you have uh, the measurements or actually the pattern for such a dress. <laughs> I really have to show more of this uh, later once the light is better. But you get you get all the patterns here which you need. This is like how to make your own your own man uh, waistcoat and things like that. It's all in German, unfortunately. So, um, but if you are already a talented a talented sewing. That's no way a dress for a house staff. Okay, this is this is a servant girl during Empire time. So this is eighteen hundred. We're talking about in Hamburg. <laughs> 
uh, serving cups of tea, I suppose. There, on that side. <laughs> this is really an awesome book. Look, this is the, this here is the simple working, working dress. Obviously, she already has pain in her back from working, doing all this work. <laughs> oh, this is interesting. If you are sick, then you get a, sh a blouse in the shape of, of this one here. So you, it's not sewn together, it's tied together so that you can easily take the blouse off and treat the sick person, like changing the shirts. Interesting. Really? There is a dress, <laughs> there's a dress for fencing down there. <laughs> yeah. Very pleased to have his book. I'll share more about this later. And now it's getting dark and I need supper and you probably had enough of me talking about something when you're here for crochet <laughs> and it's sewing. But uh, yeah, that's what you get here, a mixed bag. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you soon again. And thank you, Carol, Caroline and Marta for the lovely swap and Tiffany for this wonderful, wonderful collaboration. I feel, I feel very happy. <laughs> so before it's pitch dark, bye, see you next time.